I wasted so much time trying to get sales. Can you relate to this? It was all about massive action through cold calls or cold direct messages or cold emails. It was all about the tactic, the action you take, having the attitude of tenacity in taking massive action. Massive action got to a point where I got totally burned out. I remember sitting in my car about to do some cold calls. This is when I did door to door cold calls. And I thought there's got to be a better way because of that moment in time in the decision I made next changed everything I spent less time taking action in trying to reach prospects and I spent more time onboarding new clients I started incorporating leverage into my activities and everything changed I became the top salesperson I broke sales records for most sales in a week month year six year ten year period and what I did is I ended up starting my business in 2016 to help other other people who struggled in sales, mainly CEOs and founders of small businesses. In this video, I'm going to break down a simple formula that I created so that you can execute with leverage, spend less time and start to onboard more clients. Before I start and talk about how I have helped hundreds of clients take their business to the next level, here's a full disclaimer. If you are in the B2B space, meaning you're a business and you sell into another business, watching this video to the end can increase your sales tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars to even millions of dollars. However, if you think I don't want to watch the entire video, then this video probably is not for you and you can watch something else on YouTube. No hate. I just want you to know if you're here to learn and grow your business, I'm here to help you. When I was sitting in the car that day and had had enough being burned out with all this massive action, I came to a decision to do things differently, which gave me leverage. So I spent less time reaching out the prospects and more time onboarding new clients because I was making new sales. And I came up with the framework tabs. It's T T A B S tabs. The first T is tactic. And that's what you do. The second T is technique. That's how you execute on your tactic. A, it used to be, I had to have an attitude of tenacity and just go, 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 go. Well, I shifted that from having the attitude of tenacity to having an attitude in the perspective of serving, going with the intention to serve instead of sell. As I tell my clients and prospects all the time, if you go with the intention to serve and not sell, you will attract and not repel. And then B, that's the activities. That's the number of tactics you do. And then S, this is something that provided leverage that I wasn't doing at all. Strategy. Strategy, marketing is all about first and foremost, this is where many people get it wrong, identifying that main need, that main want of your target audience, your prospect, and speaking to that need and want in such a way that they have confidence in you, in your solution, being able to solve their problem. This is where it starts. This framework gives you leverage because you'll know what to say, what not to say, and it brings sales and marketing together in alignment with one another in one congruent process. Marketing is building confidence in your prospect's mind about you and your solution being able to solve their problem. Sales is about converting, converting leads into meetings and meetings into clients. You need both of those. And for much of my career in sales, I thought marketing was a waste of time. When I understood the power of marketing and how to utilize it, it provided that leverage that changed my life and the lives of hundreds of my clients. Before I go into detail on tactic, technique, attitude, behavior, and strategy, I'm going to bring all of these together and compare them to what I did previously. Previously, it was tactic, technique, attitude, massive behavior. Now, yes, I still use the tactic. I still use a technique. It's improved. Attitude has shifted a little bit. I do less of the activity, less tactics because I'm using leverage and I'm incorporating a strategy. Here's something that you all can relate to. You go into a retail store and many times who meets you at the front door or as you walk into the store, you're typically greeted by a salesperson. And what do they say? Welcome to the name of the store. How can I help you? And what do you say? Just looking, which is a lie <laughs> because you have your walls up and you don't want to be sold. The sales clerk is using a tactic of greeting, not much of a technique and massively greeting people all the time, all the time, 
all the time. She's not engaging in conversation because she doesn't have leverage. That's just with a tactic, attitude, behavior, okay? Little technique. Let's say she's incorporating tabs with a better tactic, an improved technique, an attitude to serve. Doesn't have to have as many greetings because she's having longer conversations with people who walk into the store and she's incorporating strategy. To have the right strategy, again, you have to know and understand the needs and wants of your prospects of your clients. Having done some research, this company realized that the people that came to their store wanted to get in and out and save money. They had that and they did some sales training, learned about technique and strategy, and they incorporated all of these into a simple greeting with a sales clerk and their sales increased 75% in the next 60 days. This is what happened. So the sales clerk now incorporating tabs instead of just tab, T-T-A-B-S. She understands strategy. She understands her customers that are coming into the store and she understands how to communicate with influence. So she greets the customers, but changes something slightly. Welcome to name of the store. Okay. Just a hand wave, open hand. Body language is 55% how you influence people. 7% words, 38% tone of the words and 55% body language. So just by greeting them, welcome to Nordstrom's. I'm sure you're here just looking. Smile. She just took that away from them. I'm sure you're here just looking. Would you be opposed to me showing you how I can save you 39%? That's typically what we can save most of our customers. Now, would you respond differently to that? And hello, welcome. How can I help you? Let me break this down real quick. And then I'm going to go into each letter of tabs. The tactic was to greet, but she used a technique with open body language, which gets people's attention. It's a pattern interrupt. And then she took the information from what people typically would say, just looking. So she greeted them, welcome to Nordstrom's. I'm sure you're here just looking, right? She just took that away from them. Would you be opposed? In sales, this is called going for no. If you go for no, people are more likely to say yes. Would you be opposed to me showing you how we can save you 39%? That's typically what we save most of our customers. Going for no, knowing that the customers want to get in the store and out of the store. She said, I can save our customers 39% usually. Would you be opposed to me showing you going for no? So just by doing this, the customers came in the store, spent less time and spent more money. Let's break down tactic in the B2B space, business to business. And let's say you're on LinkedIn and you're looking to utilize LinkedIn to grow your business. Many salespeople, many small businesses, founders and CEOs who maybe don't have sales reps yet, they are reaching people based on a demographic search through cold DMs. They spend much time getting little results. 3% of people in your demographic search are ready to make buying decisions. That's a low, low, low number. And so you're going to execute, take massive action and get little results. Just like I was when I was doing all this massive outreach and doing cold behaviors. So this is what you can do differently. And this is one of the ways I help my clients. When you do a demographic search, again, 3% rule, you can Google search it. 3% of people are ready to make buying decisions. When you go with leverage in which is marketing and get people's attention and provide value, you move people from a demographic to a psychographic. Psychographic includes the demographic, but it's people who are putting their hand up and saying, what you're talking about, I want to learn more of because I have a need to solve a problem in my business. So I took people from DMs to live events. Live events on LinkedIn are, are easy to promote. Now you're filling people, numerous people. It's not one-on-one -on, -one on one. You're reaching numerous people with one event and the people who register for the event are putting their hand up and saying, what you're talking about is something that can potentially solve my problem. You understand the shift from cold outreach through demographic to psychographic. So just by shifting your tactic from cold outreach with demographic to having an event, which is psychographic, people who are interested in what you have to offer from 3% to 35% and above, 35% more likely to do business with you as opposed to the demographic 3%. Now we want to talk about technique. Technique is how you execute on your tactic. And this has all to do in not not only what you say, how you say it. Relationships personally and business are very similar in how you communicate with your significant other, your partner, or a prospect and client determines if they want to communicate with you and work with you. When you change 
what you say, how you say it, and you understand, just like that sales clerk meeting people coming into the store, it changes the dynamic of your communications. Influence in sales, just in life, 7% words, 38% tone of the words, and 55% body language. I show my clients what to say, what not to say. I don't give them a script. I give them a template and understand how to communicate and the way to communicate. They're getting their audience's attention. And they're attracting them to you. A, that's the next step. Shifting from an attitude of selling to serving is a key differentiator. Have you ever had someone, a salesperson that really truly seemed to care about you? No one comes to mind, but if you have, it stands out because it's so rare. When you go with the intention to serve, it just naturally changes what you say and how you say it. So by my clients taking the shift from selling to serving, they like it because they don't want to sound salesy and they understand intention to serve doesn't mean you're just bending over backwards and giving whatever you want. You're being the authority controlling the conversation. And by controlling the conversation, you give direction for your prospects and your prospects will see you as the authority and someone that they respect. Last point I want to make on, on attitude and shifting from selling to serving. Sales is not about trying to get someone to buy the thing that you want to sell them. Sales is about helping people first through those obstacles and helping them achieve their goal. People aren't gonna remember everything you told them, but they will remember exactly how you made them feel. So go with the intention to serve, not sell. B, behavior. A number of tactics that you execute on. Remember I was talking about getting burned out, taking all these massive actions with these cold outreaches. I've had many of my clients who are doing something similar and 25, 50, 100, I had one company I worked with, they were doing 300 cold calls a day. It was automated through their phone system and they were getting burned out and they got little to no results. Just by doing the event, they were able to do one event a week and schedule more meetings with that one event and they were doing 50 to 300 outreaches per day. Think about that. One event per week, they were getting not only more meetings scheduled, people would show up at a higher percentage and there were people who already saw them as an authority, who start to know them, like them, trust them because they went to an event and they received value from them. That's the difference between having leverage and doing cold outreaches just based on tactics, technique, and S, strategy. I've been talking about this through the entire conversation with you all. Very important. If you don't know and understand your target audience, then you're not gonna be able to speak to them in such a way where they have confidence in you, they like you, and see that you can potentially solve their problem. So when you know your target audience, you can craft a strategy. I help my clients craft the strategy so they can utilize these live events to speak to their needs and wants in such a way that they get their attention and they wanna to talk to them and see about how they can serve them because they become their client with a greater frequency, spending less time. That's leverage. Tabs, T-T-A-B-S, is the exact framework I've used to help hundreds of clients two extra sales, five extra sales, and I have had clients that have 10 extra sales using this framework. I have no doubt in my mind, if you execute on what you learned today, you'll start seeing results. This is only one piece of the puzzle. If you watch a video once and then you execute, what usually happens? The execution is flawed and then this is where I can come in and help you in additional ways because tabs is the framework and how you utilize each one of these within the framework is essential. Obviously, I can't cover everything here. This is a framework, but how you execute on the T, the T, the A, the B, the S is essential. And if you want to get your sales from here to here and burst through those obstacles so you can reach your goals, there's a link to my book, The B2B Blueprint to Predictable Sales. This is a limited time complimentary offer. If you click on the link, you can download my book. And not only will I go into some more detail on tabs, there's actually video training within the book. Download the book. If you want to reach out to me, just reach out to me on LinkedIn and just talk about this or just put YouTube in the connection request and I'd be happy to chat with you. Before I sign off, again, the link to the book is below. Complimentary copy on me for you. The subtitle of the book is Seven Fatal Leadership Flaws That Prevent Growth. Get the book, read it, and most importantly, execute on the things that you learn because nothing happens without taking action. And if you want to connect with me, reach out to me on LinkedIn. 
Again, the link will be below to my LinkedIn profile. Just mention this YouTube video or just put YouTube in your connection request.